Oh wait. Is this going to be one of those movies that no one is going to know about, no one's going to talk about, and we're not going to make any money even though it's God tier and deserves it? It is, isn't it? God damn it. <sighs> Alright, well, it's that time of year again. We always get one per year. And if we're nice, maybe two. But with that, that leads to a quick but relative question for everyone. Because in regards to the cinematic landscape and community overall over the, say, past decade, casual or otherwise, it seems to be the majority opinion that our entertainment has pretty much taken a complete nosedive from the greatest mountainside that the planet has ever seen when it comes to the creativity and originality side of things, patronizing and insulting the audiences that it once catered to in exchange for extraordinary and at times exceeding returns to the now seemingly endless supply of word vomit and cgi diarrhea that can fill the mariana trench mixed with alienating and unrelatable adult pretenders that get mad at you just for asking for good product in exchange for your hard-earned dollars and even more importantly you're invaluable and more than likely sparing free time and while yes, fan investment and therefore fan returns and box office achievements have been on a sharp downward spiral in Hollywood in this post-endgame era, it seems evidently obvious, even to the blokes and fellow degenerates on Twitter, that this attitude simply isn't enough. And while the answer, or at least another step towards the solution, seems clear in the eyes of the consumer, and it finally leads to this long-winded and long-awaited question that I've been blue-balling you guys with for the past minute and a half. If a good or even god-tier movie comes out and no one is around to see it, did it even happen? Which leads us to The Creator, a 2023 action sci-fi flick mixed in with a little love and a lot of emotion for the sap such as myself. And honestly... A contender for a movie of the year in my opinion you better watch out for those greater awards in december if plank doesn't just sweep the board stop being a greedy girl brie it's not classy and while this is a movie that i can't recommend enough and a movie i definitely urge you to to go in a little green for the complete immersive experience i've done enough showcasing let's get into the plot Again, to keep it as vague, interesting, but also as brief as possible for the reasons mentioned before, the creator follows a world in which AI has been established and slowly formed into the people's everyday life and culture, starting off as manual labor, but quickly adapting and upgrading slowly but surely into becoming more and more human. To the point of face scans and likeness from the public, rights as a whole, with the hopes of eventually being recognized as an individual species, but of course, there wouldn't be a movie if nothing went wrong. And what went wrong was a nuke that decimated the people of Los Angeles and half of Western society, creating a war between the United States and the AI technology of New Asia. The main character select screen, you meet Joshua, an ex-Special Forces agent who finds himself in the middle of the war between the United States and AI technology, which I'll be referring to as sims throughout the rest of this video so have fun with that who after a mission gone wrong deep behind enemy lines alongside some questioning loyalties finds himself recalled into action by the u.s government in order to lead a mission to destroy a mystery weapon that the ai have created to combat the united states ai hunting death star <laughs> Okay, lo siento, I mean Nomad, a whatever trillion dollar space weapon that I'm sure will not go unnoticed to the brain dead farts in Washington who simply salivate at the idea of my tax dollars. With the team successfully reaching the weapon, an AI child named Alfie who seems to have special abilities and modern upgrades to their programming on their fight against the United States in hopes of winning the war, Joshua is now tasked with the moral dilemma and spiritual journey in his decision to either destroy the weapon, or in this case, depending on how you look at it, a child, or fight for a world in which both humans and the Sims can coexist together. And if you still haven't seen this movie, but are 
still on this video, that was truly the best, but most simple synopsis that I could get. But for everyone who has seen the movie, let's get into the pros. Alright, so a lot of pros here. Might even have to rapid fire them off. For starters, while there's nothing really groundbreaking here when it comes to the core of the story, think Logan, or even more recently with The Last of Us, but the execution is what really makes the difference here. The casting and acting is nothing short of incredible, and there's a lot in me that wants to describe the creator as a character-driven story. Joshua and Alfie are the true soul of the film, and without the attachments to their characters and journey, I could easily say that the movie wouldn't have resonated with me as much personally over the course of the movie, and I'm a sap. John David Washington and Madeline Una Bowles from... Wait, what does that say? Wait, this is her first role? Wait, this is her first time on camera? Yo, what the... Language! Thanks, Cap. Point is, the emotional beats of Joshua and Alfie's journey throughout the movie is the real home run but that doesn't mean there weren't runners on base. Alice and Janie as Howl, or Miss Corporal Commander, was terrifying and terrific, not only as her character in regards to being an actual threat to be taken serious without coming off as a cliche mustache twirler, or having to create fake stakes or have unnecessary actions lead to shock value for the sake of shock value, but an actual menace who plays off the themes of the movie to almost pure perfection. And while there are times that the movie is going for big things, big messages, so to say, that fall flat from time to time, Miss Corporal Commander could not be bothered. Almost to a point where I'm asking if she was really even a villain or just an asshole. Because when it comes to the themes and overall world building of the movie, it begs the questions of what is intelligence, what is artificial intelligence, how different is it from us, and when does it become different from us? What would we even do if we were faced with such a godlike dilemma? And if you've seen the movie, while I know the decision might not bode well when it comes to the box office in the sequel slash universe obsessed world that we live in, I can only sing the movie's praises when it comes to not taking the direction that I'm sure the producers and studio executives wanted to go in and sticking to the course of action that director Gareth Edwards wanted to end on. But on that same note, especially when it comes to the world building aspect of things, unfortunately, we must get into the cons. As mentioned before, when it comes to the themes and overall world building, I just wish more was done. The war between the United States and New Asia, while yes, still effective from a narrative side of things, how does the rest of the world feel about AI? Has AI incorporated into other cultures and regions? How did Europe or South America take the LA nuke incident? Even our closest brothers in arms like Canada didn't even make an appearance. And adding that extra element in to flesh out the players of its world even in passing, would have made it more fulfilling, satisfying, connected? Yes, actually, that's what I'm going for here. And while yes, this isn't really a con of the movie necessarily, more of a directive choice, the choice to not have any well-known or recognized actors in the film isn't going to help, and honestly is really going to do the movie a disservice in regards to the box office. As shallow as that may sound, Unfortunately, we're talking Hollywood here, but what's even crazier is that this is one of those rare movies that I think the film could have run a little bit longer. There were certain themes or beats throughout the movie that were wrapped up rather quickly, and I wouldn't be surprised if a two hour or a two and a half hour cut of this movie comes out when it hits digital or Blu-ray. At the end of the day, the creator was an emotionally character-driven film with incredible acting, solid world building, tense action set pieces, breathtaking cinematography, and more importantly, a memorable story. And if you're a fan of sci-fi or just a fan of cinema in general, tired of the same processed food and ready to break the matrix of ingesting shit on a screen Hollywood blockbusters, then this is the movie for you. 
Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Oh, actually, I can't believe I didn't even mention this before. The budget of this movie was $80 million. <laughs> that is unheard of, and I had to double check that fact because, my god, does this movie look more beautiful and stunning than any 200 million dollar movie this year i swear i challenge you guys to find me one there is absolutely no way and it sucks because i know i'm gonna think about one as soon as i hop off this mic anyway again i want to thank you guys for watching the video make sure to like and subscribe but otherwise that's all the words i got for you today bye